So what we are going to do now is take a look at the overlay file system at a high level. We will just see what it is, how it works. And then we will go to our virtual machine, we'll do a demo to see it in action. And then we will see why we need an overlay file system and how it helps and how the container world uses it. So an overlay file system essentially comprises of three layers. The lower layer, the upper layer, and the overlay layer. Let's not worry about what a layer exactly is. We will take a look at it in a minute, but we will see how the overlay file system works. So in the lower layer, let us say you have two files creatively named LL for lower layer, LL1.txt, LL2.txt, and likewise, two more files in the upper layer. What happens is in the overlay layer, what you will see is a combination of all the files and directories in the lower and upper layers. So the next question is, what happens if there is a duplicate file in the lower layer and in the upper layer? The answer to that is what you will see in the top layer, also called the overlay layer, is the duplicate file from the upper layer. Now, what exactly do the layers mean here? Well, a couple of things. One, the lower layer and the upper layer could be two different file systems, each with its own root directory and a bunch of data, in which case the overlay layer will just work exactly as we described. But the typical scenario is the lower layer is a directory or a collection of directories. In this example, directories one, two, and three all form the lower layer. And then you have another directory at the upper layer. And what you will see at the overlay layer is a combination of all this data. So why don't we go to our virtual machine and see this in action? That will make things a lot clearer. So let's go do that. Okay, so what we are going to start with is the simple example that we just saw, and we will see that in action. And that should get us going with the overlay file system. And then we will start digging into it. So as you can see, I've created a separate directory for this demo, overlay FS example under the Everglades directory which you should all be familiar with by now. And what we have here is a bunch of directories. And you should be familiar with some of them. The lower directory corresponds to the lower layer, which has a bunch of files. The upper directory corresponds to the upper layer, has a bunch of files. The important thing here is you can see there is one file, dupe.txt, that is that exists both in the lower layer and in the upper layer. And then if you look at merged dir, this is the overlay layer. It is empty. And the reason I'm calling this merged should be obvious because what you will see after we create the overlay file system, when we mount it is a union of the data in the lower directory and in the upper directory. So that's why I've called it merged. And for this reason, the overlay file system is also called a union file system. In fact, an overlay file system is a type of union file system. There are other types of union file systems. And then the work there doesn't contain anything. 
So let's talk about this a little bit. The work dir is not something that is used by the users directly. It is used by the system as a temporary work area for internal purposes. So we don't have to worry about that other than passing it when we create the overlay file system, which is what we will do now. So first, let's take a look at the set of mount points. Okay, so look at the last line. What you see is a proc sysfs mount point. What we are going to do now is create an overlay file system using the mount command. The type we specify is overlay. And then we are going to specify a bunch of options. We are going to say what the lower directory is. Then we are going to say what the upper directory is. We are going to say what the work directory is. Please notice when I specify the options, there is no space between lower dir, the upper directory and the work directory. That's important. And then as far as the source goes, we have already specified that and there is no underlying device where the data comes from. So this part is none. And the target directory where this new file system is going to be mounted, that is going to be the merged directory. So let's go ahead and try our luck. Good. So let's do a DF A. There you go. Now you can see the merged shows us one of the mount points created. So what does this mean? LS. What do we have in the overlay layer now? Bingo. Union of what we have in the lower directory and in the upper directory. Great. And what do we have in the dupe file? There you go. As I said, when you have a duplicate file in the lower layer and in the upper layer, what you will see in the overlay layer that is the merged directory is the duplicate from the upper layer, which is what we see here. And this is going to be important. And we will see why it is important in a minute. What I want to show is that the lower layer is a read only layer. So any modifications you make to the files in the lower layer will not directly affect the lower layer. So how does that work? Let's take a look. So we know ll1.txt and ll2.txt come from the lower layer, right? So why don't we go ahead and modify one of the files? Let's open it. So as it says, file in lower directory. So appending a line to ll1.txt. Let's go ahead and save it. So we have modified a file from the lower layer. And let's verify that in the... So great. So when we do a cat, and that is what we see. But did this really modify the file in the lower layer, which I just told you is a read only layer? Let's verify that. LL1.txt. Nope. The original file in the lower layer, the lower directory did not get modified. So what happened? How did these changes happen then? What happens when you modify a file from the lower layer. Well, what happens is, if you look at the upper directory, something interesting happens. You see a new file named ll1.txt in the upper directory, which we did not have before. So what happens is, when you modify any of the files from the lower layer, that write, this is called copy on write. 
That is, when you try to write to a file in the lower layer, a copy of that gets created in the upper directory, and that is where all the modifications go. So with this change, you have an LL1 in the upper directory and an LL1 in the lower directory. So guess what show up in, what, which file shows in the merge directory? Well, the one from the upper directory, because that is what we saw with the duplicate file as well, remember? So when you have a new file with the same name as in the lower directory that is created here in the upper directory, that is what you see. So this is called copy on write. Again, anytime you're making modifications to a file from the lower layer, a copy of the file is created in the upper directory. This is called copy on write. And from that point on, any modifications you think you're making to a file from the lower layer are actually made in the upper directory. That is what we have demonstrated here. And the key takeaway here is the lower layer is a read only layer. So to demonstrate that again, why don't we go ahead and delete ll2.txt? Great. So what do we have here? So LL2 has disappeared. So did it really disappear from the lower layer? No, it is still there. So again, let's go to the upper directory. Great. We see a new file, LL2.txt, that is created. But why doesn't it show up in the merge editor if it is in the upper directory? You see something interesting here. The file is marked with a C. So this is a character file and this marker indicates that this is a deleted file. So what you will see in the merge directory is that this file marked with C will not show up. That is the interesting part. So again, the key takeaway here is any changes that you think you're making to data from the lower layer actually are not happening in the lower layer, but a copy of that is made in the upper layer and all the changes happen in the upper layer, the upper directory. This is really, really important to understand why overlay file systems exist.